Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on, let's give God a praise. Let's give him a better praise than that. This is, this is, this is the Lord we're talking about. This is our king, our God, our champion, our savior, our sovereign. And to those that know him, he's our friend. <laughs> if you sure enough know him, you got to learn to appreciate him for he's worthy. He's worthy. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Jesus. We're so grateful. So I know this is this is this, this is that holy week that we have, and by now some of y'all done picked out your outfit for next week. And y'all still do that? Do kids do that and get your Easter outfit? I, I know. I look in the closet. I said, "All right, wait till next week. Y'all see." <laughs> <laughs> Remember the days, Billy? <laughs> I'm going to turn it out. <laughs> Mom and them have a bonnet so big, it would block up a whole row. And folk, well, you couldn't hardly see. Um, but this is a celebration time for us. We celebrate. You know, starting today, this is, this is Palm Sunday. We celebrate the fact that Christ came triumphantly into Jerusalem, as Reverend Reggie already said, and, and that we, we people said, Hosanna, Hosanna to the highest, and they did all this wonderful stuff. Um, but can I ask you this morning, just for a few moments, let's think about how Jesus felt. For you, we all know, people could say Hosanna all they want one day. And the next day he said, give us Barabbas. You know, oh yeah, we're saying, you're the king of kings and lord of lords. And they say, crucify him, crucify her the next day. So that don't last very long. But can you imagine how Jesus felt? We're rejoicing. This is party time for us because we know what the end of the story. But the truth of the matter that this day he had to be somewhat, if not uh, grieved or sad, at least melancholy, right? He had to say, uh, this is the beginning of the end for me. Uh, 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 Deacon Joey, you read the scripture there. Can I add to that one? Uh, I'm going to add to it. It says in Isaiah 53, and it says, Who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground. He hath no form, no comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised. And rejected of men, wow, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And, and we hid as if uh, at it were our faces from him as he was despised. And we esteemed him not. And here's the part that we all know. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did not esteem him stricken. Uh, yes, excuse me, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded, why? For our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes. That's what we're celebrating. But if you think about the man Jesus going through all that, that he came to his own and his own received him not that he was stricken, that he was beaten, and this is the time that he's on his way to that cross. He's on his way to, to basically be murdered. And when you think about that, and you think about the gravity of that on a human being, can you imagine if that was you? And you knew this is death row for me. You knew I'm on the, I'm on the way. As much as everybody around you is celebrating, it has to weigh heavily on your mind, doesn't it? And so there's one thing that would have come to any human being's mind, and it came to Jesus, and, 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 and he addressed it in the Garden of Gethsemane. Like, Lord, okay, I know that was your plan. I understand, I understand you, God, and all that. But is there another way possible? Is there something else we could do other than this? Couldn't I just get like a bad cold <laughs> or flu? And it wasn't I don't want to die. I just don't want to die like that. I don't want to go through what I have to go through, yet I love the people. Don't get me wrong. I certainly want to die for them, but I, not just like that. 
not with that much pain, not with that. And it said, they said that Jesus really stressed over that. He, he was going through. But aren't you glad at the very end he said, not my will, but thy will be done. But I'm more interested in the answer that God was giving him. Yeah, why did he have to do that? What was the purpose of all that pain? What was the purpose? And I thought about being a parent. And I thought about the many times when the kids come ask me questions and ask me, why do I have to do this, Dad? Why I got to eat that? Why I got to make my bed? Why I got to clean up? Why can't I go out to the party? And I have the same answer for everything because I said so. <laughs> and this morning, I got news for you. Much of what we're going through and you're going through is not of your own doing. Even as Jesus had to go through what he had to go through is because what? He said so. God said so. Now, uh, I, I, this came to me last week. I had the, just the wonderful, delightful privilege of all my siblings being together, which is a really, really uh, strange occurrence. We came, they came together. Mom was, was seeming very low. So everybody came from all over you know, the earth to come together to be with mom. And then she recovered. I think she was faking us out. But she said, like, oh, so now you're well, right? People done flew in here from Hawaii and from Virginia. But guess what? I'm glad she's well. But we were sitting around. My sister announced, listen, for the first time, she said, I'm going to be a grandmother. Now, the rest of us are already grandparents. Matter of fact, my baby's back there. She awake. Hey, <laughs> that's that's one of that's one of many <laughs> that I have, and my grand and, and so we just love. What's the old saying? If I knew grandkids was that good, I would have had them first. <laughs> I would have had them first and forget the kids. <laughs> but but my kids came to me, so my sister was perplexed because her son came to her, her son and, and, and her daughter in love came and said, "Listen." Um, um, we don't raise, we don't want to raise our kids like you raised us. Oh, really? No, we, we don't, we, we talk to our kids. See, y'all, <laughs> no, there ain't no spankings, there's no punishment, there's no putting in the corner. We, we talk to them and get them to understand why they shouldn't do that. And so my sister would say, what do y'all tell y'all grandkids? So me and my, all my brothers, we got one sister, four, we just looked at her and laughed because we all got grandkids, multiple grandkids. And I said, listen, uh, we've had that same talk, same thing. My kids are talking about, no, dad, because y'all was too tough on us and y'all did this stuff. And I said, I got news for you. This is a good way for them not to have to experience that. You can keep them at your house. How about that? As long as it's your house, you do what you want. But when they come here, <laughs> and they get here. Now, I'm talking a lot of junk because I ain't the one, because I don't tell that baby nothing. She tells me everything. But grandma do. If she come in there and grandma says sit, guess what she going to do? She going to sit. If she say stand, grandma, she going to stand. And here's the reason why, young, young people, it's not that we're trying to be, uh, un, uh, you know, mean and not trying to, but there are times when I don't have the benefit and the time to explain to you and express to you what's going on, especially a little child. When I tell you don't touch the stove because it's hot, I can't explain to you what Fahrenheit means and, and, and all that stuff. You just got to not touch it because I can, if you reach up for that hot grease on that stove, it'll be before I can get to you. You'll already be burned. And I don't want you to be burned even though you may not understand it. You might not comprehend it. So all you need to know is hear my voice. I said, stop. you supposed to stop right in them. Stop. I, I tell you, get out the kitchen. What's you supposed to do? Get out that kitchen right then. I can't stop you when you're out in the streets. You want to run out the car and you want to run into the street because you don't see the danger. I don't have time to express to you why if you do that, you may get hit by a car and you might, it might be, um, be killed by that. So when I say stop, that means stop. Uh, there are other things that, you, that happen in our lives, and we understand. As Do I have any old school parents, or is it just me? <laughs> I go, them some hands right back there <laughs> real fast. Like when, when, when these things go down, right, we don't have time to converse. We don't have time to explain and express. There are just things because we have experience. It has happened. Trust me. I can't tell you all the stuff that's happened. And some of it's happened to me, and some of them I've seen. But what I'm telling you, I'm not telling you for your, for your detriment. I'm telling you for... You're good. Well, how many know we have a Father in heaven that knows so much more than any of us could ever know? And for him to try to explain to us 
And it's almost laughable when you think about we ask God a question as if we could understand it if he told us. If God was trying to tell us, and we said, well, Lord, I don't understand why I got to go through this. He would just shake his head and look at you and say, baby, I already told you all things work together for the good that then that love you. But, Lord, I don't, I don't get it. I don't, I don't understand why I'm going through so much pain. I don't understand why I'm going through so much turmoil. I don't understand why things are not working out the way I want them to work. And he said, because you know why? I, because I said so. There are things I said into your life and the things I put in your life that it ain't going to happen the way you want to happen. Why? Because I said so. I'm God. I'm sovereign. And whatever I say goes. God. See, while we try to ponder on things and we try to use intuition and we try to use all our cognitive and intellectual ability to figure things out, God has already figured them out. God, as a matter of fact, God doesn't figure things out. He doesn't operate by intellect. He, doesn't, he operates uh, uh, by his word. And when he speaks his word, his word comes to pass irrespective of how you feel what you believe, what you know. If God says it, it's always going to come to pass. Listen, God did not have a conference with light when he told him to come on. He said, let there be, and guess what? Light started to come already. I don't know if there was a light switch. I don't know if there was an electrician in heaven. I don't know. All I know is when God said, let there be, guess what happened? Light came. When he begins to speak things, God does not have to come back. All, all the things that's happening to you, do you know that everything that's happened to you that he's already planned it? Uh, he's not going to change the plans he's already made because he's already spoken into existence. He already spoke it into eternity. And so guess what? Your, your destiny is already set. Your, your life is already set. Why? Because God said so. And, and, and I, know, I know this is not such a, a, a jump and shout message, but I, like I said, we got to let's think of how Christ was on this day. And here was Christ about to go, thank you, Jesus, to, to probably one of the worst and torturous murders uh, in the history of mankind. And yet he knew that. Listen, just like we read in this Bible, he had the same information that, we, that his disciples had. And his disciples, no, they didn't discern it. But Jesus knew. I know what I'm up against. I know I'm going to go there. And I know all of y'all who are saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, ain't even with me. I know not one of y'all going to be with me when I'm at the cross. I already understand. I already told Peter, Peter, stop it. You're going to deny me three times. And Peter, no, no, not me, Lord. Yes, you, Peter. Yes, as much as you think you saved and sanctified. Oh, I, I'm, oh can I put a pin in it right there? Some of us think that we got it going on, don't we? We think that nothing could stir us. But God, there is a trouble that can change your very mind. There's a trouble that can change your testimony. But guess what? The only thing keep you is not that you're so saved. It's not that you're so holy. It's not that you're so sanctified. It's only because of the word of God. God has spoken. I, I love what Jesus said to Peter. Listen, Satan desired to have you to sift you like we. But the only reason you won't stand because I prayed for you. Uh, sometimes you need somebody to pray for you. You need that mother prayer. You need that father prayer. You need the saints praying with you. You think you can make it by yourself? What well, a devil is a liar. That's what he wants. He wants you to stand by yourself. He wants you to think you got it going on. You're the one who's most acceptable. But when you submit to the Lord and submit your ways to him and acknowledge him in all things, that's when uh, you have strength. That's when you get power. When you say, Lord, when I'm weak, that's when he's strong. He'll make you stronger in, in, in your weakness, in your acknowledgement of what you can do and give it over to God. But you got to do it uh, his way. I, I look also to uh, someone like Job. Y'all remember the story of Job? The Bible said Job was a good guy. Right, upright. He was wonderful. He hadn't done anything wrong. And when he got sick and boils all over his body and lost everything he had, um, just like we do sometimes, we, we get a little sanctimonious. I've been to church all this time, giving my tithes and offering, and now I'm broke. I've been coming here all this time, praying every day in the morning and night, and still I got trouble in my home. I, I, I've been going through things, and, and I can't understand it. And, and every now and then we make the mistake, or make that big mistake of going to the Lord and say, why? And, the, that's, and Job did that, and God said, excuse me? <laughs> you talking to me? Yeah, why did you do that? <laughs> All right, let me ask you a question. Where were you? <laughs> 
when I, when I fashioned the heavens and earth? Where were you uh, when, I, when I threw the stars in the sky? How did you have anything to do with that? Did, could you even comprehend the universe and the scope of it and the depth and the breadth of it? Do you even understand how the atoms and the neutrons even work? How, do you understand how life even began? Where were you at the beginning of the beginning uh, when I spoke everything into existence? Uh, man, you need to shut your mouth. And, and I love Job. Job said, Lord, forgive me. I should have never said nothing. I should have shut my mouth because uh, I don't understand. I don't know. And then I look at Jesus. And I look at Jesus and, and, and after all, all this week, so between now and Sunday, right, he will have uh, gone through so much, had dinner with his disciples he would have he would have charged the the uh, the, the church right and knocked over the, <laughs> the tables <laughs> and went to the temples try to straighten that out that's a whole nother message for another Sunday and he and he would do that and then he would he he, he would then go to Gethsemane and say Lord I, 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 I wish you had plan B but God said I'm not going to, I don't do plan B's right I'm God and I'm God all by myself and he yielded to that. And that's a somber reminder for all of us to do the same. That what God says in our life, we just have to accept it as God's sovereign will. Hard for us, especially as Americans, because we think we're supposed to have a say in everything. You know us. We think we, well, well excuse me, my opinion, like, really? <laughs> in, a, in a sovereign country, you don't have an opinion. You know that. When the king is there, when the king says everything, this is not your property. This is not your land. It's mine. Everything that's here, everything you see is mine. And so I allow you to live here. I allow you to work here. I allow you to do that. And that's why you say, your highness, and you bow before the king. Well, right? guess what? We, we serve the king of kings, the lord of of lords and so we ought to be bowing to him and understand that everything I have uh, we think we done did something because we gave him a little money a 10% uh, of our little money he said I'm the one who gave you all of it in the first place you had nothing you had no life you had no strength and now now you're happy you, you want to put your chest out like you did something big he said all these things are mine all the cattle on a thousand hills everything that you see everything is mine and he said, okay, Brother Hobbs, this is wonderful, you're just, but you're bringing us down. You're bringing us down this morning. I, I, I came here to shout. I had my shouting shoes on. I was ready to change them. And so can I just give you one thing to shout about? I, I thought about this and said, you know, Lord, yeah, this is kind of, whew, this is kind of kind of heavy uh, this morning. But he said, wait a minute, wait a minute. Not only am I, am I sovereign over you, I'm sovereign over everything. Okay, what do you mean by that? I'm sovereign over your problems. I'm sovereign over your sickness. I'm sovereign over your disease. I'm sovereign over everything. So guess what? I don't just tell you, but guess what? When those things come against you, that would destroy you. Those things that would kill you. You know what I said? And the devil wants to take you out. I said, ah, you can't do that. And the devil's like, why can't I? I said, because I said so. I remember Sister Thomasina, I remember you and an elder visited me in the hospital in 2019. You remember that? And y'all don't know this, but the doctors were there asking me and questioning me. I had a whole team of doctors asking me, how is it that I'm breathing? Because by what they looked at, I shouldn't be able to breathe. There was no way possible. They said, you should be. And they kept asking, you sure you can breathe? Yes, sir, I'm, bre I'm breathing in and out, just like that. They said, there's no way you can breathe. And they were trying to figure that out. I wish I could meet them same doctors. Excuse me. I figured out why I could still breathe. Because God said so. I, I, I don't care what your x-ray said. God said, keep on breathing, son. Because I need you to do some more stuff. Uh, and listen, there are people here that you know good and well by now that you should, your marriage should have been broken up a long time ago, but y'all still holding hands, you're still together, and you don't understand how to have, you know how it happened? It wasn't because you're so cute, or you, he was so handsome. It wasn't that you had so much romance. It's because God said so. He put you together when he said, let no man put asunder what God puts together. Uh, there are people that you know right now, the job you have, you have no business on that job. You don't have the credentials, you don't have the education, you don't have the experience, but somehow or other, uh, that you went to work, and they saw faith, and you got favor from God. And the only reason why you're at that place is because God said so. I got news for you. Some of y'all, uh, the doctors said you had cancer or you had some other disease huh? or, and you, when they went back and checked it, it was gone. Where did it go? God said, you better leave my child alone. Leave them. It, when God speaks, everything has to obey. Your sickness, your money, your home, your health, your heart, your head, everything you have and everything you owe to God. When God speaks, he speaks. Can you give God a praise right now? 
for him speaking into your life. Now, I would be lying to you if I told you that I understood why. You know, I don't understand why. But, you know, I do understand this. And we stop, um, we stop even preaching this and believing it or singing it. Remember years ago we said we're soldiers in the army of the Lord? Remember that concept? That was a big concept. Young people, you don't know about that. But back in the old days, that was like a huge concept. That we, and we come and we're soldiers, right? We have to put on the whole armor of God and all stuff. We had them signs. Remember, you just had them things hang up on the wall and with the soldiers looking like that. And that concept is very important for us to keep and, right, and, and, and to, to be mindful that we're not just here doing nothing. We're not just here to party. This is wonderful that we have this celebration. But guess what? When we leave here, we should be what? Soldiers for the Lord. And the reason why I bring up soldiers is because soldiers represent uh, as best on this world as, the, as I can possibly come up with an analogy as, the, as what we should be uh, uh, as when God calls us to this ministry. Why? Why soldiers? Because soldiers don't ask why. You ever think about it? a real soldier don't ask why? When he said right face, what did the soldier do? Right face. When he said left face, he said what? Left face. About face, about face. It does, you don't ask no questions when you're a soldier. Why? Because the, 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 the general of your, of your unit, the, the, whoever's over that unit has already spoken. And, why, and you do this by, so we can stay in lockstep. I got news for you. The Lord is speaking to the church right now. And he, when the Lord begins to speak to the church, he say right face, everybody, I don't care who you are. I don't care what your position is. I don't care how long you've been saved, how long you've been sanctified how long you think you know, how well you think you know God. But when God say move, guess what everybody do? When he say right face, all of us got to go right face. Yes, Lord. And anybody out of step, uh, they got some place for you. They call the brig. They, they'll lock you up. But if all of us who want to be in the army of the Lord got to follow his footsteps, got to follow his orders. Do we have any soldiers in the house of the Lord this morning? So I'll do what you ask me to do without questioning, without asking without going against the tide. I don't know, what, Lord, why you got me going through this pain, but I'll endure it with a smile. The Bible says praise him at all times. I'm going to praise you when I'm up. I'm going to praise you when I'm down. I'm going to praise you when I'm hurting. I'm going to praise you when I feel well. I'm going to pray. Why? Because you said so, not because I feel it. Sometimes we don't feel it. Sometimes we don't feel safe and sanctified. Sometimes we don't feel like going on. It ain't on your feelings. I go, why? Because he said so. Hallelujah. Yes. He said, worship me. I'm going to worship him. He says, obey me. I'm going to obey him. Just because he said so. And you know what? This morning, God's going to take care of you. Whatever's going on in your situation, one way or the other, God's taking care of it. You know why? Because he said so. And that's all we got to do is believe in his word. God bless you this morning. God bless you. Even as we prepare to, 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 to close, I just want to remind everyone of this one statement. The Bible is clear that says it is God's will that no one perish. That's the word of God, right? That's his, that's his will. He said, I don't want anybody to perish. And so he made a way that everyone, right? We don't know why. Again, I'm not questioning the Lord, but he made a way that everyone could be saved. How? Repent and be baptized. Yeah, and you receive his spirit. What? God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. This is what this is all about. <laughs> the whoever. Now, he, didn't, he said, I would, some people, I wouldn't let them be saved. Lord, you seen what they did? They shouldn't be saved. You see how they talk and how they act? Uh-uh. He said, no, whosoever. What do whosoever mean? That mean anybody and everybody, <laughs> black, white. Well, guess what? That those, those racist folk that you say you just can't stand. Guess what? They're his children too. Those 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 people that 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 treats people are who are killing folk over in, in, in distant lands right now. Right? I, I hate to see it. My heart goes out. But those are his children too. Sometimes we want to limit. He said, "Whosoever." But I'm wondering this morning why you have an opportunity. Is there one to say, "Wait a minute, I'm whosoever." <laughs> I have sisters whosoever. I've done some stuff. Yep. I, I messed up. Yeah. Matter of fact, probably this morning I did something, but I should have did. But I, guess what? If it's whosoever, even people that mess up, even people that lie, even people that cheat, even people that, that do unspeakable things, he said, what? Whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have what? 
everlasting life. Isn't that wonderful? And I don't understand it, but guess what? It's going to happen. You know why? Because he said so. And in your life this morning, if you want Jesus, you can have him. You know why? Because he said so. Hallelujah. He's waiting for you. He's just waiting for you to accept his invitation. Won't you accept it this morning? If you haven't already, and I don't want to put anybody on the spot and say who hasn't or have accepted, you know what you know in your heart if you did it or not. But if you haven't accepted Christ as your Savior, this is an opportunity because he's waiting for you. He's already made a place for you. He's already has a, a reward for you. Hallelujah. Oh, man, the promises are beyond our comprehension. Is there one this morning? Is there one online? Please hear our plea and our cry. Is there one this morning? God bless you, sir. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, come on. Come on, ministers and, and, and deacons. Help me out here. Wait a minute. Keep singing. Keep singing. This, this is my friend right here. Hold on, hold on. So I'm so I'm just broken this morning. Thank you, Jesus. I just ask one thing. Don't don't be going back home telling me I was crying. There's <laughs> nothing greater than the love of Christ and being able to share it with a friend, and a true friend, a true wonderful person, just a human being that I admire. I've admired for a long time. And, and, and for all the right reasons, not just <laughs> athletics, but for being the person you are. And we're going to stay with you, right, brothers? And this is, this is a commitment from us, from me, first of all, and from my other men here and sisters, that we're going to stay with you, whatever the need is, spiritually and otherwise. We're here. Are, aren't we together, saints? Amen. And let us pray now. Father, we thank you now. For this is the soul that came to you. He didn't come to us. He came to you. And we were just grateful that you gave us the opportunity to make the invitation. For you already declared that the angels in heaven are rejoicing right now. That's what the word of God says. All the angels in heaven are already rejoicing for one. Thank you, Jesus. He is the one this morning. And we thank you for that. And I'm praying that others who are seeing this example, whether they come or not, they will follow the same lead and come to you. Let's make this the very first step in thousands and millions of more steps towards you, Lord. We want to all be closer. We thank you for our brother who came and committed his life. Now, Lord, do, mis do, do miracles in his life. Oh, God, bring about a change that he thought was impossible, improbable. But we know that you are the God of impossibilities. And, Lord, above all, speak. Hallelujah. You say so in his life, Lord. Because you said so, he's blessed. Because you said so, he's saved. Because you said so, he's delivered. Because you said so, not me, but your word declared it, and we believe and trust it. We thank you now for all this and all your blessings in Jesus' name. Come on, church, let's praise the Lord this morning. Thank you, sir. And certain, certainly y'all going to talk with him and, and, um, and, and, Get whatever information they're gonna grill you, and give you some information, whatever, <laughs> whatever's necessary. But we are thank God, and we're not gonna hold your hold your. Won't you stand with us, church?
It's not too late now. We're still here. Anybody else? Uh, anybody else? Anyone want to be baptized? All right? We, we got a pool right behind me. But the, what's the people said the water, the water is trouble. <laughs> anybody want to be baptized? Thank you, Jesus. Is anyone who join up with the church this morning? Thank you. We, the, the invitation is open. We need your help. We need your assistance. So anybody and everybody, God is calling you this morning. We thank you. Thank you. Amen. All right, come on, come on. Come on, choir. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this time and we thank you for this gathering. Thank you for every one of your people this morning. We ask now that as we leave this place, we never leave your presence. Won't you go with us, be in us, and work through us to your glory and your purpose, we pray. In Jesus' name, God bless you and may heaven smile upon you this morning. You are dismissed.